Hello, hello, hola mi gente. Welcome back to the walk around Puerto Rico with Daniela and Hannah. Um, and today we'll be covering Puerto Rican music and dance, more so the typical ones that um, originated in the island. So as you're, uh, going, we're going to be talking about a lot of music today um, and linking some uh, videos to the dance. Uh, we really encourage you to uh, engage in this activity uh, today, which as you like listen to the music of um, the different kinds of dance that we'll be introducing you to, to take two different colors of, of whether it's marker, crayon, colored pencil, uh, and have a piece of paper or your sketchbook. Um, and as you're listening to the music, just draw whatever comes out, but just expressively, lines, shapes, uh, little characters, whatever. Uh, it's a really awesome way to engage with the music. Uh, and then maybe it gets you excited to start learning the steps and moves of the dances. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. Um, and what we did when we had our live classes, we did some introductions. Um, so while we can't uh, get introduced to you through the screen, I think these are still good questions to, to reflect on before we start. So those questions are, how does music make you feel? What type of music unconsciously moves your body? And what is your signature dance move? Um, Daniela, would you like to answer one of the questions? Yeah, I feel like um, all music kind of unconsciously moves my body. Anything that has a good beat on it, I'm like, you know, <laughs> bopping. Yeah. And then for a signature dance move, I definitely like uh, spaghetti arms. <laughs> <laughs> What about you, Hannah? Yeah, like my, I like, I, I honestly just music that has like a, a strong beat, especially something that is like bass heavy, I really love because I, I can't help but like get wrapped up into it. <laughs> and yeah, it's like music just helps me a lot, just like I'm trying to process some emotions and stuff. It makes me feel like if I'll, I'll lean into the emotion, even if it's like something hard, it, it can be really cleansing to just like listen to some cathartic music. And yeah, yeah. That's, music can be so, so healing. And that's a great segue into Bomba. So Bomba um, was created in the 17th century Spanish colonial times by the African people that we learned about Yoruba and that they worked in the sugarcane fields. So they use this music to express their feelings about the harsh conditions being lived, their politics, spirituality, the anger and sadness of just being ripped away from their homes and having to create a new one. Mm -hmm. um, they also talked how to overcome it. So, there's a video linked here where we will also link it below and you can check it out later. Um, it's a fun little intro to Bomba. So we also have this activity, it's called Learn How to Dance Bomba with Afro Boricua and dancer Mark Cruz. I invite you guys to check out this video. It's three minutes long and it teaches you some basic Bomba steps super fun um Hannah do you remember a step or what's your favorite one I really like the one uh where, where it's kind of swiping off the bad spirits and energies yeah so, yeah and lots of uses of the the skirts the beautiful mm -hmm. outfits yeah that's my favorite yeah. one like going with the skirt. Poop, poop. yeah <laughs> Yeah, so we invite you guys to check it out. Um, some of the instruments used are the gua, which is a 
barrel drum but it's like it's well, basically barrel and it's turned sideways and then they hit it with some sticks um the bomba or barriles are the main like uh, drums used and they like set a beat and then the primo is one drummer with a specific um drum and he follows the beat of the dancer's steps so the music becomes a sort of conversation between dancing and sound and it's really beautiful to see them coming together um to just explore express all of this bubbling emotion that is on the inside. And then lastly, the last instrument is the maracas and the like chick, 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 chick. nice little beat markers as well um, in the background. So Bomba has a really rich tradition during Christmas time um, in the island currently. Uh, there are these things called Parrandas, and it's a musical tradition that takes place during Christmas holiday season. So people gather together with a bunch of instruments and they sing um, different um, songs about Christmas time or like about just being all together. Um, and sometimes they'll be singing bombas. And so the bombas here are a little bit different than the ones that are being danced. Um, they include this uh, like chorus part um, that says, I'm going to say it in Spanish first and then translate to English. <laughs> La bomba, la que rica es, 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 me sube el ritmo por los pies, por los pies, mulato, saca tu trieña. And then you introduce a kind of bomba joke here. And then, so it can be something as silly as like yesterday, I went to your house and I asked for a piece of chuleta, which is meat. But instead, you threw me a chancleta, which is a flip flop. And then everybody says bomba. Um, and if the crowd liked it, they'll sing again the chorus, La Bomba, how rich it is, is, is the rhythm, cross through your feet, through your feet, mulato, and by your cheek, trienya, to dance bomba, bomba, por tri, kenya, bomba. So that's a fun bit. And then if they don't like the song, the, if they don't like the Bomba joke, sorry. Um, they'll sing, they don't know anything about bomba. And they'll be like, no sabe nada, no sabe nada, no sabe nada de bomba, no sabe nada. And then you'll go on to the next person. So it's a really fun tradition um, that kind of puts you on your feet and try to think about these jokes. Um, and it's a great way to gather together um, just to like, over music, singing, um, with some panderetas and maracas and guiros, which are different instruments used in these parrandas. And they're also used for plena, which Hana will introduce now. Yeah, so plena Puerto Rican, uh, it was the full name. A plena, it was developed and based on bomba music. So it's like an evolution from it. Uh, around the beginning of the 20th century in southern Puerto Rico. Um, and so both Bomba and La Plena are like still um, really prevalent in Puerto Rico today. And you'll hear that music and the dancing in like diaspora communities too. Um, and so the instruments in La Plena are, are used for Plena are a little bit different. Uh, so there's the pandereta, which is the tambourine, uh, the, the barilas, um, the drums, a guiro, another type of drum, and then the uh, saxophone, um, which I think the addition to the saxophone is like really cool and beautiful. Um, yeah, and so in La Plana, the singing and music is more important than the dancing. So it's more focused on that like the melody as like the saxophone might suggest uh, that addition. Um, yeah, and so 
We also have this, another video uh, where one of a player he introduces all the instruments and you can hear how they all layer on top of each other it's really cool really suggest you to check it out uh, and again as you're listening maybe draw on your paper express it feel it out maybe move your body too and yeah but we'll link that in the description below too a very great resource I wanted to add or correct Hana that the guido is um it's a little long instrument like this that has a lot of ridges yeah and then it, it has it's played with um like a hand piece that has these metal rods on them and then you hold it and it goes like chuk, 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 chuk. <laughs> yeah so that's the guido <laughs> it was it's made of like a old fruit husk right? yeah Okay, yeah, that's my bad. No worries. I just want to set the record straight. <laughs> um, yeah. So the themes in La Plena, are, the lyrics in Plena are narrative. So telling a story, just like how people convey a story about events, they address topical themes such as legends, hurricanes, and conditions of living. Of uh, uh, how do you say the place's name? Of El Jibaro. El Jibaro, the yeah. early 20th century, as when it was developed. Uh, so this mural, which uh, Daniela will uh, tell us more about, ha depicts the stories of 12 different planas. Um, and yeah, it's a very cool mural. We'll have an activity where you can find all 12 of them in the yeah. mural. Yeah, so a little bit about the mural. It was um, created by Rafael Tufino. Um, it's giant. <laughs> and like Hannah said, um, it does uh, depict um, 12 planas in, in the mural. So um, it's fascinating to see a visual representation of these narrative poems, basically, that are made for um, musical purposes. And so with this, um, you will have to find Cortaron Elena, which is they cut Elena, um, Temporal, which means bad weather, El Perro de San Jerónimo, which means the dog of St. Geronimus, um, Josefina, Santa Maria, Holy Mary, Tintorera del Mar, which is um, shark of the sea, Fuego, 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 fire, fire, fire. Monchín del alma. Monchín is a person and it's dedicated to like Monchín of my soul. Uh, cuando las mujeres, when women, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Tanta vanidad, which means so much vanity. Lola, which is a person. And then el diablo colorado, which is uh, the red devil. Um, so... Here we are, big screen version. We invite you to pause the video and try to figure out which of these um, different sections of the uh, mural or like the different characters resemble which of the 12 planas. And then I'm gonna pass on, pause the screen though. Here are the answers. <laughs> so, on the left corner, you can see Cortaron Elena, which they cut Elena. You can see her like in a chair with some blood on her face. Um, the song kind of talks about how they just cut her. Like, Cortaron Elena, Cortaron Elena. And they have to like take her to the hospital. <laughs> very narrative, very simple. Um, the big green fellow in the top of the painting, Temporal, he symbolizes bad weather. So Temporal, Temporal, here comes a Temporal. <laughs> and they're singing about, oh my gosh, the hurricane's coming in. And like, it's inviting them, kind of expressing their fear sort of, of this bad weather and what will happen to their houses and um, their crops and stuff. Um, another one 
that you can probably identify pretty easily is Santa Maria, Holy Mary. I do not know the lyrics to this uh, in Plena, but it's very evident there that um, the woman on her knees is holding up a little Virgin Mary relic. Um, it seems like she's defending herself from a weird hybrid horse monster. <laughs> So some of some those are some of the uh, the plenas. Um, if you want to learn more, there's also um, we can link in a resource in the bottom of this page so you can read more about them. And then finally, time to salsa. Hannah, do you want to talk a little bit about the salsa? Sure. Uh, so salsa, it's the dance that was actually originated in the New York barrios, where uh, young artists picked up on the sounds of different Car Caribbean communities that had settled in New York, making something completely new. So in New York, there's a lot of uh, like diaspora communities, including the Bariquan community. Uh, and so they came together uh, and people formulated this whole new sound and dance, which is salsa. Uh, and they love it all over. <laughs> like it's such, it's such a great way to move. Uh, and including back at home in Puerto Rico, people are dancing it there too. Uh, it's really awesome that it came from the barrios back home too. That mm -hmm. connection is so cool. And so the movements that salsa dancing incorporates is fast footwork, turns, and hip swaying over an eighth count of time. The steps, they are easy and quite repetitive. And what makes it spicy and interesting is how people <laughs> sway their hips and turn. So how you put your personality and feel the music as you're, once you have these first basic steps down, how you like, add your own flair to it. Mm -hmm. And then when danced in pairs, one has to be the lead while the other one follows. And this is how it's best danced in pairs. So you're responding and almost having a conversation through your movement in that way. Yeah. And it's a favorite back in the island. And like Daniela says, what is partying without some salsa? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, if you're interested, this is a great video in our live class. We all learned it too. I got to learn some of the basic steps. Uh, this video is very uh, straightforward, very well taught. And yeah, we encourage you to get up on your feet, get moving and learn these, these steps. They're great. Invite your friends and family, do a whole thing. Um, salsa is really fun and there's a lot of places where you can go dance for free. So if you learn some basic steps, who knows, maybe you'll find yourself in a park on a Sunday dancing some salsa with a bunch of COVID-friendly strangers. <laughs> yeah, um, super fun. Enjoy yourself. And then that's kind of it for today. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed some of the music and dance, although you weren't able to hear it here. Um, I hope that you take the time to check out those links on the bottom of this page um, so you can hear some of the music um, that is played and just do that activity where you draw um, whatever you feel through the rhythm of the music. And then, yeah, invite your friends and family to try out that salsa moves, which is probably going to be a fun time saying this. And then for next class, um, we'll be talking about language and poetry in the island, and it'll be featuring some colloquialisms, Puerto Rican phrases, some slang, and a little bit about poetis, uh, Lola Rodriguez de Tio icon in the island. So thank you so much for being here and we'll see you all next time. Thank you. Thank you, bye.